Good evening. My name is Tom Morell. I'm chairman of the Public Works Committee. I'll call the meeting to order this evening. Uh, it's Tuesday, August 2nd, uh, 6 p.m. 2016. We're in the first floor conference room of City Hall, Wisconsin Rapids. Um, we'll go around the table here to introduce ourselves. Scott Kelly, older person. Todd Ferkey, older person. Paul Shabelsky, City Clerk. Joe Eggstead, City Engineer. Joe Terry, Director of Public Works. Steve Goat, older. Okay, and item one is review the DPW monthly report. Joe? Um, your packet should have the uh, uh, work activity for the month of July. <clears throat> Did anyone, did everyone have an opportunity to take a look at it? And did anyone have any questions? I got a question. Uh, sure. As far as reading pool items for auction, you're talking about our meat pool, your, right. some of the stuff that's there. So there are some, um, some pumps, uh, some chemical feed equipment that might uh, be of interest to some of the other smaller area facilities. And so we're trying to get those things ready and on the Wisconsin surplus auction site and try to recover some value out of those. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. So we'll get this off to uh, uh, River Cities Community Access. It'll get on our website and, and uh, available for the public then to see what kind of progress we've had this yeah. last month. Okay. Yep. If you found it says managing request for smaller uh, recycling containers what what have you found quite a few people or? well we had initially um, I initially made an estimate there'd be about 500 um, Small ones. smaller ones as of today today was our, our well last week Friday was our deadline for notification but we did find out that we had um, some folks in some of the mobile home parks that didn't get the notice and so we've uh, we've extended their opportunity to make a request until one park was the fifth the other is the tenth because I really need to get them ordered mm -hmm. um, in any case at this point to date we have I think 519 requests for smaller sized ones so um, about 6,000 uh, standard 96's and, and uh, 519 uh, 48s. Well, that's close to what you projected. Pretty close, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, if nothing else, we move to item number two, and that's review and consider approval of the final plat and relocation order for uh, Wisconsin DOT number eight, eighth Street South and East Grand. Uh, Avenue project there. So this is for the highway safety improvement project yep. and um, the, um, the relocation order in plat or in the in the packet. Um, basically what the plat shows is there's there's five uh, five temporary limited easements that are needed for um, matching in with the sidewalk. Uh, mainly for sloping grading purposes um, that's needed for the project and um, so it, it impacts five properties but they're they're only temporary just for construction purposes and um, I guess staff recommends um, approval of them that there, there isn't anything that seems to be incorrect or inaccurate with the either document so Well, we need a motion. Okay, I'll make a, I'll make a motion to approve the final plat and relocation order for w uh, Wisconsin DOT number nine, uh, 6999 
dash zero seven dash one eight four dash eight eight eighth street south to east grand avenue second Any further discussion by anybody? Hearing none, uh, committee, all those in favor respond by aye. 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 All in, uh, opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, item number three. Discuss vehicle safety concerns and alternatives at Daly Avenue and Lincoln Street intersections. So this is kind of a follow-up to um the, the whole intersection traffic impact analysis with Quick Trip. Um, it's a little bit different topic, being that it's at Daly and, and Daly Avenue and Lincoln Street. Um, but it's a continuation of the memo that MSA had put together um, for the city, uh, kind of reviewing some of the accident history and providing some options on um, how we might proceed making that intersection a little bit safer. And so I thought I'd just go through and just present it, present some of the options and, and stuff that they had uh, come up with. Um, at this point, it's, it's kind of a continuing to be looked at, but um, just wanted to, uh, since we had a little bit of time this month, to inform the committee of where we're at with it. Um, so based on the accident history that's there, uh, there's, um, I guess first I could start with the geometrics. That that intersection is very closely um, close proximity to the expressway. It's only maybe maybe a hundred feet in between there, and so when people pull up to the traffic signals at the expressway, they start to back up, and sometimes they'll back up past uh, Daly Avenue, and sometimes people leave a gap for the intersection which is good, but they can't really see the traffic. So they'll pull up to Lincoln Street on the side and they can't, they can't see anybody coming. And you know, they'll, they'll try to get out and go. And so there's a lot of rear end accidents and, and right angle accidents there. Um, in fact, it was the police department that kind of presented it to the engineering department and said, wait, maybe you want to take a look at this intersection because there seems to be a lot of accidents here. Um, so some of the some of the improvements that were suggested was um, I guess it starts on page six here of this memo, but um, it's a don't block the box. It's basically a pavement marking that would extend through the area that you know where the vehicles would queue up at the intersection to keep it clear so that the visibility could remain um, for the other motorists um, to clearly navigate that intersection. Um, there's also time of day turning movement restrictions. Um, we've got a few of those sorts of things in town, um, either by fixed signage where we have a sign that says, you know, during this time period of the, the day, um, you know, no right turn sort of thing. Um, or there's also the, um, the style that we have over by along the expressway with the with the railroad crossings, where it's an illuminated sign that lights during a prescribed time of day that you know would limit uh, turning movements at that intersection. Um, and then also, so these kind of these these examples kind of escalate in their in their um, maybe what the effectiveness that you might get out of them. Um, there's also uh, basically re restricting movements at that intersection full time, either uh, which could be trialed with a more of a temporary obstruction, such as um, the uh, what do they call them here? The tubular marker. Yeah, these markers that would extend through the intersection so that um, you know traffic just they couldn't turn. You can't go through turn left on daily or make a left, they could make right a right, right only, or really that, that would be their only option, to make a right only. Mm -hmm. So that would be really kind of a trial, um, a pilot test for installing something more permanent like
curb and gutter or something that would, a median that would um, restrict traffic from uh, being able to make the, the through and, and left turning movements. Um, so on the, on the last page, there's a nice kind of table on, on page 10 that goes through and documents kind of an escalating order of uh, the safety that you gain from each of those options how it affects operations, and then the overall cost <coughs> being low cost to high cost um, options. So the, um, the low cost ones being don't block the box, uh, fixed message signs for time of day turn restrictions, and then the temporary markers. Um, the most expensive one would be a permanent barrier, uh, such, a, such as a median. It would also be the, the most impact on safety as well. You'd have the best gain for safety, but mm -hmm. it also impacts the convenience of the traffic quite a bit as well. So, so it's just a, kind of just a summary to um, update the committee on kind of what we're looking at and um, trying to evaluate some of those options. So staff isn't prepared at this point to make a recommendation, but uh, we did want to pass that information on so that if uh, if you have questions, you know you you can take a look at this and share it and and make it a part of the discussion. The only thing on this is um, the the signs that would restrict movement on certain times of day or or um, tell you what you can and can't do. Um, my observation when I've been out uh, motoring around town is there's a sign by Lincoln High School that will say no right turn on school days from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. going off of 16th Street onto the expressway. Mm -hmm. And even on school days, on school year, you see that that sign's ignored. Um, there's another one up on East, if you're coming off of the expressway heading east by A Street, there's another sign there that says no right on red. That one's ignored regularly too, and I think there's one down by the expressway on Second Avenue where it says no right on red. Yeah. I've seen people do that. I, just my opinion, I think maybe the, the illuminated sign would probably be better because it would probably grab people's attention a little bit more other than just the black and white marked sign. Yeah, and a lot of times with those particular signs, um, you know, it's they're only as effective as, as a force enforcement can assist with. But uh, you, know, you can't expect that there'll be enforcement there all the time. So really what ends up happening is in the event of an accident, it, it really clears the, clearly defines the at-fault vehicle mm -hmm. also. So um, you know, people put themselves in a, in a risky situation and if they choose to ignore the sign and they get into a wreck, it's, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of question to at fault. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, there there may or may not be some effectiveness there, but you know, for people who tend to follow the rules and you know, they'll they'll abide by the signs, and you'll have your certain percentage that is going to do whatever they they want to do until they get into a wreck or get into trouble. Yeah, I think there's there's pros and cons to, to all the options, and that would be one of the cons is with the fixed message sign is that it's it's uh, the compliance of it mm -hmm. that you know it relies on people actually reading it and understanding it and following it, and may not always be the case. So, okay. In full tonight, right? Yep. So our next item is a uh, review again. This is uh, for discussion, but we're uh, kind of going back and taking a look again at uh, 25th Avenue South as a follow-up from our April meeting, uh, looking at speed reduction techniques that, uh, uh, you know, an attempt to have a, an effective solution other than you know, to actually get people to slow down um, rather than adjust the, 
speed limit to meet the 85th percentile speed. Um, in the packet, you can see a number of uh, a number of alternatives. So we've got some uh, short-term temporary bump outs as as things to. Uh, Attempted traffic calming makes the street look narrower. Um, you know, if it's if it's found to be effective, these could be installed. There's there's some uh, challenges with these types of uh, features as far as maintenance goes. It makes it extremely challenging for snow and ice control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it's certainly certainly something. Another option is some lane restriping would be to uh, reduce the driving lane from 12 foot to 11 foot and then include a 5 foot painted bike line, bike lane and a 8 foot parking lane. The configuration for this is about $13,000 but if ultimately it's that this is decided uh, that it's a viable option, typically what the city likes to do to avoid um, new costs that aren't budgeted um, and that you know because there is some striping already out there is it once that street receives a chip seal maintenance or some type of uh, of surface maintenance that covers up the old lines that then the new uh, you know the new lines would be painted in those locations rather than trying to sandblast the old ones off and mm -hmm. and uh, have a, an additional cost Another option is what's called a, a speed table. Um, it's, it's like a speed bump. It's a traffic calming device, but it's, it's larger. Um, you may have seen these in other cities. Um, I've got a daughter that goes to Oshkosh, and they oh, yeah. have them you like know, on campus hump. there. Yeah, it's kind of a hump. Mm -hmm. um, from my observation, they aren't particularly effective, but... Uh, you know, it's certainly an option to consider. Why do you say they're not effective? I mean, uh, from, from at least, and again, I, I can't say that I have uh, gone out there with radar equipment or, you know, it's just casual observation mm -hmm. um, that people drive over them at the same speeds and it just, hmm. you know, it, it's not, uh, you know, it's not particularly damaging to the suspension. You know, it's a it's a bump, but um, you know, it's kind of like a a speed bump in a parking lot. If you hit it at six miles an hour, it's pretty jarring. If you hit it at twenty six, it's kind of just a bump bump, and, <laughs> and you're you're good. So, um, you know, these these can be effective. Um, you know, some places use them with some reasonable results. Another option are radar speed message signs. The city has used the, the radar trailer out there before. Um, you know, I, I think for some folks, maybe it, maybe they notice it. Um, it seems to that when those things are placed out there, the, the effectiveness is fairly short term. Um, these, this is another option that's shown on the screen is, is uh, uh, message board that becomes a little more permanent rather than the the trailer. I think that slows people down. At least I, I slow down when I see something like that. Mm -hmm. And those are uh, solar, right? Solar, solar panels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I've seen some just this last week. They not only flash your speed when you're over the speed limit. But then they also have a red and a blue light yeah. that strokes. Yeah. Yeah. So those are kind of effective. effective. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe me if you get a ticket on those. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not sure what the cost would be on them, but I would think it would. Those are about $5,700 each. Well, you wouldn't think it would be too many, you know, like one on your side. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Another option are some uh, similar to the temporary but a more permanent bump out is shown in the, the picture. It's similar to what is uh, exists downtown. Uh, again, there are some uh, significant costs to these and um, generally they're not well liked by staff because it, it really slows down maintenance activities and, and makes uh, storm removal real challenging. Another improvement, uh, because so many of the complaints were related to pedestrian safety, is sidewalks. Um, you know that's what they're for, and um, our standards for um, an arterial like that is to have sidewalks. And I, you know I think when that area was built, um, you know, there weren't a lot of houses at that time, so it probably made sense not to have sidewalks out there. But uh, with so much of the concern surrounding pedestrian safety and, and kids walking to school over there, um, sidewalks certainly can be a, a safety enhancement. And you wouldn't have to put them on both sides of the street, right? Well, that's the standard, but... I mean... Yeah, you wouldn't have to. You know, the cost and so forth have it on one side. That, that typically becomes quite a... A, a political discussion because the, the, the cost of the sidewalk is assessed to the property owners. Yeah. So not only do they have the assessment cost of the sidewalk, but that they also have the responsibility Shoveling. to maintain it. Yeah. Um, so certainly one side might do the trick, but you know everybody on one side is going to have to cross and use the other side. Then right. you know, there's certainly more homes. I think there's more homes on the on the west side, west but side. There, there's still several houses on the east side as well. And then finally, we've got some uh, full reconstruction alternatives. And these particular alternatives would really have to be considered carefully because um, they don't follow our standards for that type of roadway. Uh, narrowing of the pavement, changing, uh, you know, changing some of the lane widths and, and uh, significantly reducing it so that you create a you know, much smaller street, but that street was designed to flow traffic. That's mm -hmm. you know part of our system, and uh, you know that's the that's the compromise. Some streets we really need to have for moving traffic, um, collectors and minor arterials, and other streets are local streets, and this happens not to be a local street. So uh, you know some of these some of these full reconstruction alternatives uh, might not be a good fit. So like the, uh, like the previous item, there's a table here that kind of reviews the, the various options, um, what types of improvement, the uh, impacts to speed, and the general costs without specific dollar amounts just kind of compared to one another. How do you read it? 1.5 to what does that mean? Yeah. So 1.5 is is uh, saying that for like temporary bumps up bump outs for pedestrian and bicycle right. safety, it's a small improvement over what's existing, not significant. Okay. Um, two would be a moderate improvement, and three would be an improvement. So cool. 1.5 is very marginal. You know, as far as saying that there's any improvement there. So what you want to see is a three and a three. If you really want improvement, then that's full reconstruction. And basically the reason why people speed out there is because the street's designed for 35 mile an hour speed limit. If you want to go 25, we've got the wrong street designed. You know, we're designing that street to move traffic. So uh, full reconstruction, you'll see, although the most costly is also the, the biggest improvement to both pedestrian and bicycle safety and speed because you're basically changing it back into a local street. So like the previous item, this is for your information uh, to maybe meet with your constituents, think about for a little while, and um, you know we're, we're starting to work on budgets, and so if there's a desire, a strong desire to move forward with um, any of these, 
you said that, and I think it's smart to not put new lines in until they get a uh, new coating on or whatever. When do you suspect that might happen out there? Do you have any idea? You know, I have not, I really haven't evaluated that section. I'd have to sit down with our, with some of our street department staff and um, take a look at our pavement surface rating. I, I don't think that's on our short list right now. Um, meaning that I don't think it's slated for the next three years. But I, I'd have to really talk to staff and confirm that first. Uh, I kind of like the signage where the, uh, the solar panel where it shows your speed. I think it gives a message to the driver that you're going too fast and to slow down. At least it affects me personally when I see it and I think most people and for the cost, and if we if we if we can't do the line for another four, three to five years, let's say, mm -hmm. then it seems to me that might be an interesting thing, temporarily, mm -hmm. and and probably probably, probably so I think for what you know, basically how new the road is, right, mm -hmm. to chip seal or whatever to do is going to be down the road sometime, right. What we what we might want to try is, um, you know, we've we did our speed study in the fall. We could try to uh, maybe do a bit of a, a speed study again this fall. Get the trailer out there, park that there for a month, and study it, and yeah. study that, or even for two weeks, yeah. and see if if there's any permanent change, or if it changes for. Mm -hmm week and then kind of returns to normal that might be good test that might be a better test or at least a good test uh, before we spend you know literally twelve thousand dollars just yeah. on the product plus installation um, and if you could do that after school starts I think because that was one issue about pedestrians pedestrian right. and you're going to get more in my opinion more traffic there because people will be dropping their kids off at the middle school and on so after school starts to be a good time. I think we could do that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's do that. And let's go then to number five. Review and determine priorities as it relates to pursuing a quiet zone. So we don't have any new information for you this month, but um, last month we kind of presented the costs and um, um, Tom, you had made a comment at the yep. last council yep. meeting, yep. Um, you know, so that the public that you know, hopefully would make comments and and uh, provide some input. You know, for those watching that maybe missed last month, we we went over some of the costs associated and and uh, some of the options for creating railroad quiet zones. Um, you know, with the idea that we kind of let it simmer for a month and mm -hmm. and try to make a, a decision on a direction to recommend at this time. There's been quite a bit of staff time involved in um, in this investigative project so far, and. Uh, you know, what I'd like to see is because we do have a number of uh, priority projects that we're trying to get done is to try to choose a direction at least short term so that we can either uh, put this on the back burner or move it to the front burner but uh, so that we can either get staff off of this and on to some of the other priority projects or, um, or address it and make progress moving forward quickly. Todd? Well, again, to me, the, the, the cost is so prohibitive as far as, uh, you know, enacting the safety measures needed to accomplish uh, a half a mile of, of a quiet zone. So, uh, again, when we do road construction, reconstruction on roadways that do have the crossings on them to, to look at enhancing those <clears throat> intersections or those crossings with the safety measures needed. But uh, rather than uh, 
go out and spend that million or million and a half. If at some point we get a lot of um, public uh, discussion where they would want to put this on a, on a referendum to, s to spend that kind of money, um, then I guess we could proceed at that point. But at this point, I don't, I can't see it. So. And if that's the decision, at least at this point, we do have a fairly comprehensive um, study of, mm -hmm. of costs and effectiveness and, and things like that, so that if we do have to revisit it, um, base. we should be able to just yeah. pull the information back off the shelf and, you know, and touch on it again. And, and I agree. Um, Cost-wise and whatever, I think we've kicked this around mm -hmm. enough years. <laughs> sure. That we have to make a decision one way or the other what to do with it, sure. instead of just you know uh, keep kicking around. Right. Um, one way or the other, we have to do something with it. So um, uh, I guess in my own mind, I am in my own mind, I am fine with we just put it to bed mm -hmm. for now. If somebody wants to bring it back down the road, they can bring it back mm -hmm. up again. But for now, it's, uh, we put it to bed. Mm -hmm. I think in the, in the future, too, where um, of course, I live at a, in an area, or my, my business is in an area that does a lot of switching with mm -hmm. the uh, general chemical or the chemical place there. Uh, so it's, you know, it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, quite annoying for me, but uh, if I was, if I had my home next to the tracks and the, the train come through at night, you know, I'm sure that's, more annoying for that particular person. So uh, again, when it gets to the point where there's enough uh, animosity or <laughs> angst uh, for people to want to spend the money, uh, I guess we'll proceed at that point. But uh, just can't see it now. It's a very expensive item. Mm -hmm. You know, and if, if, if people want to pursue it, mm -hmm. You know they're going to have to come forward and tell us that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this has to be put on you know mm -hmm. top of the ledger or whatever to, mm -hmm. to pursue it. Mm -hmm. And I haven't heard it expressed to that to that means. Right. Yeah. I made comments at the last one at number fourteen that I put in. I like to change it to ward cleanups rather than choose to reuse because it's a very complicated process. I visited that and people could take advantage of um, choose to reuse if they want to that exist. But I think a ward cleanup might help all our wards and, and just in the future to think about it. Another thing and I mentioned to you, Joe, is I like to put on here like um, <coughs> Those, identifying those poles for banners and the um, oh, stipulation as to what has to be in a banner. I'm part of the Convention Visitors Bureau and they were hoping to identify poles and Joe has and to put banners across. Um, like for example, we have the World Ski Show to put that or you might have the uh, cross country, state cross country. Because when you come in the town and you see that or people mm -hmm. They live in town. Say nothing's happening in Wisconsin. Well, they are. There is a lot of things mm -hmm. happening. I mean, the World Ski Show to cross country meets mm -hmm. to, and the whoever the organization would have to purchase the banner, um, but some stipulation. And I don't know. It would pr probably have to go in front of the Common Council for for that approval. So um, I think that it came up at the. Convention Visitors Bureau, and I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to put poles in, and Joe has identified them, so that's cost effective. And if the organization pays for the banner, um, 
and publicize there. So I think it makes sense. So if we could put that on our wish list here too. Mm -hmm. As in a referral there, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we can uh, scratch number eight. Yes. I think we have the information that we need there. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the only thing that would change on it, other than adding number 28 for uh, developing policies for uh, organizations that wish to put banners. Should is we coming to the city? Should we keep number seven on? I know it was your concern, Tom, but we discussed it, and, uh, and where we put, where we have certain situations like the expressway, but because of Quick Trip and others, I don't know. Or should we? I don't have a problem taking it off. We're moving along with it. Just yeah, so I, that, yeah, that, I think that, that's that we continue to look at yes. intersections that where uh, we can. Yeah. As yeah. long as we continue to look at it, yeah. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I think we can, uh, you know, do that as part of our standard yep. intersection analysis is, is try to determine what what types of traffic mm -hmm. control best yeah. fits situations. Yep. yep. So do you want number five back on, or do you want to just, just as a sidebar, you're going to do that? I th I think as a sidebar we'll okay. we'll yeah. um, okay. we'll do that. Okay. Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to maybe to add it, but with a different uh, title. Um, evaluate. Radar proposals, <laughs> speed limit signs on 25th. Yeah. Effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Over a two week period or whatever. whatever. I don't have anything new at this point. I know there have been some discussions. I'm not sure if you've been involved anymore. I know it's been um, Adam's quiet. been um, working with the county on uh, availability and, and options there and looking at potentially different still agreements. In discussion. Yeah, still in discussion. Mm -hmm. Is there um, a move-in date for the county going into the river block? Any, any type of schedule? I'm not aware of one. Oh, okay. I know my wife works up there, and you know there's there's progress on some of the remodeling in the courthouse, oh, okay. but I don't know if there's any okay. any set move dates yet. Okay. <clears throat> For um, First Street North, at the bike bike route, um, tentatively right now we've we've kind of we're kind of looking at August twenty third um, as a possible date to have an open house to discuss that with the residents. Um, so if you know if there's something on your schedule that day or you know something that might work better, um, it's certainly just tentative at this point. So okay. what was that date, Joe? Uh, August. I That's a Tuesday, August twenty third. Yeah, probably August twenty five, four o'clock. Four o'clock. Okay. Uh, tentatively at the library, we have another uh, 
What is that at five? Five o'clock, I think it's a public information meeting for the Second Avenue. Yeah, the Second Avenue South Park. Um, yep. DOT project from the expressway to the roundabout. Yeah. Along with that, then, I guess, the first street, then, as far as the Quinnell's Creek, the dredging thing, is that... Um, During the, uh, the project design, we're going to... We've, we've already done the um, survey that we needed to do to kind of evaluate how much uh, material would have to be removed. And during the permitting and, and um, designing phase of the rest of the road project that we just... We, coordinate that at the same time and then depend on what we're kind of thinking the lift state there's a lift station right there at Shorewood and First Street that needs to be replaced and um, it might work out well that um, during the replacement that the water level in the creek might have to be lowered anyway which would assist in the dredging as well yeah. so it might it might work out it might be a stretch but um, at least we can plan try to plan for it it makes sense yep. Just so it's all kept in mind. Yep. <laughs> well, I think that's it for me. Me too. All right. And entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor, respond by aye. 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 Opposed? I have it. Meetings resumed. I have a uh, <laughs> <by> here. <laughs>